All right, so before we present each of the individual movements, we'll have a little overview here. Okay, this is what you can expect to see here as we go through the program. First things first, we're just gonna simply foam roll the thoracic spine, okay? So while doing that, we're gonna spend 30 seconds doing one movement, 30 seconds doing another, and we'll go through a couple rotations. This will take about three to four minutes. All right, tense, release the T-spine. We'll do uh, similar positions as the foam roll above, but you'll do a contract, relax style of stretching segmentally up the vertebra. That should also take about three minutes. Then we'll kind of superset our door stretch and our tricep stretch back and forth. So we'll do multiple rotations of each. That'll take about three minutes. Then we'll work on external rotation with a band. Okay, we'll go through that twice. That'll be like two minutes. We'll do pull aparts. That'll also be kind of uh, two or three sections times two. So that'll be two or three minutes. Then we'll do ankle mobilization. Okay, each, each ankle will be mobilized like three times, 30 seconds each. So that'll take three minutes. All right. Then we have a series of goblet squat based movements. We'll do an assisted version first to make it a little easier. Then we'll do the sort of a body weight version. Then we'll do a kettlebell loaded version. Each one of those will be like 30 seconds on, then 30 seconds off. So that'll take three or four minutes. And then finally, we'll do the overhead squat itself as a stretch for the overhead squat. And we'll start off with a few rounds of PVC, working on balance and timing um, and pausing in the bottom position. And then we'll do a final round maybe with just an empty bar, okay? Something very light. Uh, and then that'll be the basic mobility routine. It should take approximately 25 to 35 minutes uh, to complete the whole thing. All right, so what Jason is doing here is he's gonna foam roll his T-spine to work out a little mobility there. He's gonna start with putting his hands up over his head. He's gonna spend about 30 seconds there going from basically the base of his scapula all the way up to the top of his shoulders. Next position is going to be to hug himself. He's gonna pull his arms all the way around, try and touch his own lats. Spend another 30 seconds there. And once he's done there, he's gonna hug somebody else. So hands out by the sides, another 30 seconds. Look how happy he is. All right, for this portion, Jason is going to do what's called a tense release on his T-spine. He's gonna start basically at the base of his T-spine, right between the shoulder blades, and he's going to just relax over the foam roller. The tense phase of this, he's gonna contract his abdominals, his anterior chain, and hold that as tight as he can, like he's trying to throw a soccer ball. Squeeze that for about 10 seconds, and then just relax and let himself kind of drift over the foam roller. And you can see, as he releases, he actually gets a little bit more room there. He's gonna tense up again. You can notice he's not moving a great distance. He's trying to stay as static as he can and just kind of take advantage of that extra positioning. And as he releases, he goes a little more open. He's gonna do this three times on one vertebra move up just until that next notch on the spine, and then we'll do the same thing. He's gonna tense up, and he's gonna release and just relax. Do that whole thing two times on four spinal segments. And just try and relax over the front roller as much as you can for about 30 seconds in between. The next movements are meant to be performed as a superset. Jason's gonna start with the door stretch. His right arm is at a 90 degree angle with his elbow bent parallel to the beam. He's going to push his chest forward until he feels a slight stretch in his right pectoral. He's keeping his shoulders and his feet squared with each other, not rotating, and just easing into that stretch. He's gonna hold that for 30 seconds, then he'll do it on the other arm. Once he's done there, He's gonna mosey on over, push through, good. Once he's done there, he will walk over to the wall for a tricep stretch. He's gonna keep his feet relatively square, get that tricep up by his ear with his elbow bent, and he's gonna push in, trying to get a stretch out of his tricep and his lat there. He's gonna hold that for 30 seconds. And then switch arms and do it on the other side. We're gonna repeat this whole circuit three times. So that's 30 seconds on each pectoral, 30 seconds each tricep, and repeat. So for this next phase, Jason's going to take uh, one of the light bands that we have, a red one. He's gonna take his hands out about as wide as they can go. 
and he's gonna do band pole bars here. He's gonna start by retracting his scapula, holding his shoulder blades in his back pockets, basically, pull them back and down. Maintaining that positioning, he's going to squeeze them together as he pulls the band apart with a slight contraction and hold at the back. He's gonna start with his hands parallel to the floor for 30 seconds. He's gonna move them clockwise so that they're diagonal there and perform the same movement for 30 seconds. Again, the main focus here is maintaining scapular retraction and depression. And then once he's done for 30 seconds there, he'll go the opposite, form another set of 30 seconds. Again, contract and squeeze. Focus on keeping that posture up and shoulder blades back. For this next movement, external rotations, Jason is going to loop the band through itself so that it's supported against the support or against the frame here. Once again, he's going to fix his posture, shoulder blades back and down. He's going to start with one arm, arm bent at 90. He's going to keep his elbow tight to the body and rotate out as far as he can go, which is probably going to be around 45 degrees. He's going to do 30 seconds here. Go as fast as you need to on the way back or on the way out but move slowly on the way back to neutral. Once he's done with that, he'll just switch sides and repeat. All right guys, so to stretch out our ankles here, Jason's going to approach and support a little bit of his weight against the support beam here. He's going to start with his foot a couple inches away, probably four or five inches. Keeping his heel flat, he's going to drive his knee towards to touch the actual support beam. If we get a little closer here, you can see we're allowing that knee to track out in front of his toe. You want to find a distance where it's difficult to touch your knee to the bar, possibly impossible, but darn close. And then you want to work moving towards the bar for 30 seconds. If you do so, you'll probably find that eventually you'll start touching the bar and you can always just scoot out a little more. 30 seconds on one ankle, 30 seconds on the other. Repeat three times. So a lot of ankle mobility. Not much. For the next series of drills, we're going to have a progression of gradually increasing difficulty goblet squats. We'll call this the goblet squat series. To start, Jason's going to take one of our assistance bands. Uh, we recommend roughly 50% of body weight. Loop it low. You can see he's going to step into it and basically load it, kind of like putting on a belt right above the glutes there until he squats. So once he's in this position, he's going to assume basically a goblet squat stance or kind of front squat and go ahead and drop down to the bottom. Once he's here, this is gonna take a little bit of body weight off, allow him to really play around with his positioning. With this, we wanna shoot for feeling a position where we can drop into full depth, basically ass to ankles. Keep the knees tracking out and keep your weight on your heels. He's gonna spend about 30 seconds here. Once he's done there, he's gonna stand back up. Step out of the band, oh my and then perform the same thing with body weight. Again, our goal here is focusing on depth, range of motion. If we need to, we can use a little assistance down in the bottom, holding onto the bar. Notice he's kind of rocking back and forth, trying to figure out his positioning, loosen up his ankles a little bit. Again, with a good overhead squat, we're looking for that tall vertical torso and ability to sit your hips basically right down to the back of your calves, allowing your knees to track out. If your calves are tight, if your ankles are tight, it's not gonna happen. So spend some time here trying to open those up as well. All right, so for the final phase of the goblet squat, we're gonna actually use a kettlebell. Go with something light and conservative here, guys. This is all about mobility and just slightly loading the movement. So Jason, 210 pound guy, back squats well over 400, is only using a 16 kilogram kettlebell. Take that as a point of reference. Once again, we're dropping into full depth here, chest up nice and tall, letting those knees track out over the ankles, a little spinal mobility, and just working on getting down and low. Spend about 30 seconds there. If 
Finally, Jason's going to be actually performing repetitions with the goblet squat now that he's all loose. Focus on nice full depth. He's gonna go for about 10 reps. Perfect. All right, and last but not least, we're gonna put it all together for the actual overhead squat. And we're gonna start light here with just a PVC pipe. Oh boy, getting crazy. So he's got the bar fixed out over his head. Elbows staying locked, keeping our active shoulders here, and he's gonna assume that same stance we just worked on with the goblet squat stretches. He's gonna spend a count two beats down, again, controlling that descent, one beat at the bottom, one beat back up. We're gonna do this for 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So aim for about five to eight repetitions in that 30 minute window.